All right, everyone, get your stuff going. Spawning up in the top left for Dragon Kitesy Gaming. It is Oliveira, the reigning world champion. And his opponent spawning down in the bottom right. Back from the military. It is Rogue. One of the greatest to ever do it. I cannot believe it. This show match popped up out of nowhere. This is being organized by the World Team League. I am unbelievably excited for this one. And y'all should strap yourselves in because we've got ourselves a potential barn burner. It is a best of seven. Rogue is fresh back from the military, so we have no idea what form he is in. But this is so exciting. Unbelievably exciting right now. And I am just, I'm here for it. Now, Rogue has always been one of the best players at understanding the game, at figuring out tricks and ways to play that really, it's pressure point, StarCraft. It's not just brute force, you know, get into a ring, outbox your opponent. No, it is a very different breed of StarCraft that Rogue has always played. And I am so here for it. Now, Oliveira, he is that grinder that I'm going to out last you. We're going 15 rounds. I don't know. What is it now? What does boxing do? Is it 12 rounds, 10 rounds? Doesn't matter. You get brain damage anyways. Uh, but regardless, it is going to be a, a slugger versus a finesse player. And that is so exciting. Now, Oliveira has always been one of these players that is... Until he won the World Championship, he never really had that huge accolade. Whereas Rogue, Rogue has definitely been a player that is, has had those big tournament results. And he, he always turns up during the big tournaments. It's cool. It's awesome. Uh, is it going to be... We do have a 3cc 211. Oh, snipe on the creep tumor. No. Nice job from Rogue. Lings are able to get enough on top of that that he prevents this from uh, getting sniped down. But yeah, this is going to be a 3cc 211. And it is just two Hellions before to provide a little bit of map control. Contest the Lings a little bit. Rogue, let's see what he can do. He has... I mean, he's been an innovator so often for now he is just droning up quite hard just now starts to resaturate the gas in the main base you do of course have to be a little bit careful with these hellions because that's all of your map control until the until the marines are out until the Marines are out in full force and really the medevacs. Rogue spreading that creep right to the edge. Managing to uh managing to make sure that it's not snipeable, but as I say that, Oliveira pokes in, grabs a fresh tumor. Kinda nice. You can you can apply a lot of pressure onto a Terran player just by having really great creep spread. Rogue so far. Hasn't built anything beyond the first six lanes. He's always been good at understanding how to drone. And sometimes how to get lopsided advantages off of droning. More so than many other Zergs. Not to say they don't understand it. But he is good at saying, okay, X player doesn't attack until Y time. I can drone this much. And he's on 64 drones. 64 drones at like the 515 mark. That is a ridiculous worker count for this stage of the game. And now he's going to start pumping units. Oh, man. God, that is a strong worker count in terms of benchmarks. 
There are a good number of queens here to deal with this. No transfuse. Good micro so far from Oliver. Does burn down one of the queens. Gets another. Oh my god, there's not enough links. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, rogue. All of a sudden, in some huge trouble against just the first two medivacs. Finally, some target fire on the medivac. Will grab one of them. But this is still a problem. Oliveira getting some huge damage done with this first drop. But is that enough to actually take this one? On the other side of the map, there was maybe some counter aggression just denying the base. Rogue is still in a good spot. He's still on 63 drones. Well, maybe not good spot. He's still in a in a decent spot. He's got a lot of creep spread, which is very nice. Creep did not really get cleaned up much there. Meanwhile, Ling counterattack on the other side of the map runs into a siege tank and a few marines, and they do get some decent pickoffs. Oliveira, nice hot pickup. Gets out of there with the small bio force. Man, this creep spread from Rogue is actually really nice already. Ooh, Link counterattack. Going to get in here at a very opportune moment, just as Oliveira is moving out. And not going to be able to get too much in terms of real damage. But he does drag the army back home. Buys himself more time for his 1-1 upgrades for the Hydra Den. I will say, I, I do like Oliveira's position. Oliver does need a little bit... Well, he needs to start that 2-2. Two -two. That's plus 2 armor, and there it is. Creep on the right side, opening the pocket for a push here on Oceanborn. And I, I do like this tank setup. Going to allow him to threaten from the high ground on Rogue's ori original fourth base. Meanwhile, though, Rogue counterattacking with a good number of lings, but Oliver is in position. Good siege tank spot at the third. And good positioning on the reinforcing marines. Rogue. Looks like he wants to break this position right now. Does he have enough? Siege tanks. Ooh, they are going to scan. Bailing's being pulled back. Very wise move from Rogue. Very smart the way he takes this fight. We will see uh, a heavy set of losses for Rogue, but he cleans up the tanks. And he saved the Banes. Oh, and actually, he's going to get a medevac that flies through. He's going to get all three, maybe? Oi, oi, oi. Not the best moves from Oliveira right there. Trying to rally back forward with the army, but he flies over those queens. Losing two medevacs. One of them had four marines inside. Still. Rogue not having an easy time of it, per se. Oliveira's micro has been quite good. But Rogue's creep spread is very good. And look at this. He repairs the creep instantly. He's back up to nine queens as well. No Hydra's been added on just yet. He just now has his first six about to hit the field. Infestation pit coming on in. Burrow play. He's already got Hydra range. Kind of nice to uh, delay the Hydra upgrades. Or pardon me, delay the Hydra production until the upgrades are ready. But uh, hasn't started that Hydra speed just yet. Meanwhile, for Oliveira, he is getting into plus one vehicle weapons as well as a Planetary Fortress at the 4th. Need to see a scan. Yep, there it is. Going to clear up a bunch of creep. And the 2-2 timing for Oliveira is sharp. He is a sharp player when it comes to these kind of timings. Adds on a couple of Widow Mines. We do have two more Command Centers coming on in, so the transition towards late game for Oliveira is underway. Oh, Siege Tank in the back. We got Flank coming in from Rogue. Banelings, meanwhile, on the front line. Going to connect huge Widowmine on some of the Banelings right there. And the, the Flank was kind of disrupted a little bit. It's still got the cleanup on the back line. Ooh, Rogue going to try and get in on top of this army, recognizing that Oliveira stepped a little bit too far forward onto Creep. Rogue pinches off a couple of units there. 2-2 Two -two will now complete for Rogue. God, this is already a great game number one. Secondary attack coming up on the top side from Oliveira. Rogue, though, continuing to spread creep all over the place. Oh, target fire on the Banes. He's going to be able to gun them all down. Might not have been target fire, but he recognized correctly that he could take that fight. 
Ooh, meanwhile, secondary attack will find a couple of queens, and a scan would clear up all of this creep. If he gets every active tumor, that would be so nice. Ooh, Widow Mines. Oh, retarget from Oliveira. Nice job. That was a, a nice little move from Oliveira. Rogue behind this. Lurkers coming on in. As well as Adrenal Glands. Plus one missile. Lurker range. We do have a counterattack coming in through the middle. Oh, kill on the command center. No cancel. We don't have drilling claws just yet. Very important to get that upgrade because that adds the cloaking. With the most recent change to the Widow Mine, one of the nerfs was the, the cloaking field. Oh, cute. Gets a little bit of a mind drag. Doesn't kill the Marine. Obviously, that's a, a nice little micro play. Siege tank does get abandoned here. Will get taken down. Funny that it got a last shot against the Lings. Oh, Lurker is going to come on in. Huge flank from Rogue. But the Banelings have already been spent. However, the Lurkers, they are more than good enough to get the splash damage. And that might be the decisive engagement that allows Rogue to push forward. Finds a Ghost. Widow Mines are not good against Lurkers. Oh, big Widow Mine shots on the Lings, which is so nice. But is it enough? We've got Ghosts to deal with the Lurkers, but they have already killed a bunch of SCVs. They're going to get the Command Center as well. Rogue is playing a hell of a game here. Oliveira putting a really solid fight up against him. But it looks like Rogue is well positioned to take game number one. It's not over yet. It is really difficult to kill a Terran player on Oceanborn. But Rogue certainly has gained himself a significant advantage there with the knockout of that base, killing a lot of SCVs. Oliveira, I think right now he needs to focus on stabilizing a little bit. He is going to go for a little bit of a counterattack. Doesn't necessarily want to let Rogue just sit back and macro and enjoy the advantage he's carved out for himself. Three, three on the way here for Rogue. Interesting that he elects to get the plus three missile melee instead of the plus two missile. Does mean his up his uh, lings will fight better, but his upgrades won't round out as quickly to three 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 overall. Not a huge difference. But it is a notable one. Also, very notable, is that Oliveira did not start that plus three attack ever. He just now started it now. Man, Rogue's attacks are just vicious and furious. Never letting Oliveira get a good setup. Gut does, uh, Oliveira does get a couple of pickoffs on those Banelings on the tail end. And sh probably should be able to turn this defense into a kill on this base. Ooh, nice burrow on the drones. It's going to force an extra scan. But it still will be all the drones getting taken down. Man, Rogue is just always there to answer. Oh, big Widow Mine shots. But they do get dragged into the army a little bit. There are a lot of ghosts here. Rogue trying to flood this army. Does he have enough? I don't think there's an Overseer. No, there was, but it got sniped. And that means the cloaked ghosts are still here. Snipe's going to come in on top of the Hydras. We'll be able to get a lot of them. This is a very messy skirmish. But the cloaked ghosts are so good. There is a burrowed ling during all of this. Oh, Rogue. Dropping changelings, putting burrowed lings in the fight. Very cool play. Oliveira, though, did get a very cost-efficient defense. Good job spotting those changelings as well. Scan on the top side. Sees this base. Rogue is... Oh, man. This is such a good match already. God, this is already an amazing macro game. That Burrowed Ling is so high quality. It finally does get scanned and found. Oh. Oh, Widowmine does end up going off for a little bit of friendly fire. There is a planetary here. And if Oliveira can make a strong defense around this position and get his Liberator count up to a decent setup, 
He may be able to still turn this game around, but he is still definitely on the back foot. Rogue splitting off Banelings to the left side. Oliveira oh, will be able to save the planetary. Meanwhile, on the other side of the map, seven drones going down to a Liberator on the top side. Rogue going to send Queens in here. Transfuse? No, nope, not transfuse, but doesn't matter. He still cleans it up. Oh, man, the changeling usage is just constant here from Rogue. Good spread against the Widowmine, preventing that from becoming a disaster. Oliveira nearly maxed out once again. No range on the Liberators. Does he have a fusion core? No. In fact, he's only got the one star port, so it's, it's not a strong Liberator transition, but it's what he can afford right now because this economy is not amazing. It has been significantly cut into by Rogue. Man, it feels like there's like a, a frenetic aggression to Rogue. Like, it feels like he just doesn't give you any breathing room. And speaking of which, this is a huge surround getting set up by Rogue. Lings, Banes, Hydra's coming in from every angle. Banelings going to try and connect on the Ghost. Ghost splitting up, but there's so many Banelings behind this. However, the rest of the army kind of ignoring the Banelings will be able to get in on the back line of the Hydras. 24 SCVs go down. That's a huge set of pickoffs, but the command center number two did not go down. Rogue is going to lose this base before it can get set up. And we've got, actually got an army supply lead for Oliveira. Resources lost. Oh man, this, this series is already delivering so hard. Oh, Widowmine's going to come on in. Well, Ling's going to come on in. Bailing's from the back. But there is a hot pickup. And the Bailing's just say, how do you do? They do manage to take down the Widowmine. Nice job. Split off just enough Banes to absolutely kill that. Massive Mule Hammer on the left side. Oh. Ling's going to intercept some reinforcements. The Cloak on the Ghost, though. Oliveira so quick. Oh, Widowmine does get taken down. Still no Drilling Claws, so there's still no Cloak for those Mines. Ay, 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 ay. He really needs that. Oh, cute little Burrow Ling play. Oliveira does need to get a sixth base because this base from Rogue is up and running. And that is a really big problem. Oh, Ling counterattack on the top side. This siege tank is still there. It's up to 42 kills. And will help to keep this alive, but it also friendly fired a lot of those SCVs. Uh, Oliveira actually rebuilding SCVs a little too strongly at that new base. Can transfer some back to this position. But he needs to take this bottom side base. And there we go. That's exactly what he's setting up to do. Uh, very interesting. The base layout has not been a normal setup. Rogue has taken such strong control of the right side that Oliveira has not felt like he could contest it. Oh, another massive Ling counterattack coming in here. Lurkers in the middle have gotten themselves a skew. What do you say? How do you say that? They've gotten themselves a breast. The reinforcement line. Oh, the Lurkers just unburrowed. Oliveira, I think he might have just F2'd there. But he just got he just got away with some very unfortunate uh, movement. Drones being... Oh, no. Okay. I was like, what the hell is he doing? He's sending them to the top side base. Snipes do grab a couple of lurkers here. Rogue does not have the money for like a Broodlord transition. This is actually some big losses. Huge Widowmine shot. Could have been a lot worse. The old Widowmine would have killed even more. Oh, Liberators will get cleaned up by the Hydras here. They take their pound of flesh, but it is expensive. Is this enough to, to break through this base? With the mass repair, maybe not. No, it will be. It will be enough. Meanwhile, though, Oliveira is going to counterattack on the top side. Going to be able to knock out at least one base. Oh, he's killed 17 drones, but he's lost 33 SCVs. This is still so close. Rogue is spending every bit of cash that he gets as soon as it comes in. Oliveira, meanwhile, did secure this base on the bottom side. I don't think Rogue knows about it. No, he does. He does know about it. He needs to deny that. He cannot let that get up and running. That will allow Oliveira to continue to produce units. Ooh, Lurkers do get jumped in the middle of the map, but that speed burrow is so powerful. 
Rogue does deny the mules before they can become a problem. Oh, nice burrowed link play, play here from Rogue again. This game is a banger. And this is just game one of a best of seven. And Rogue, during all this, he did save this one base. And that is huge because he actually does not have a lot of mining beyond that. But he's got so much more mining currently than Oliveira. And it feels like we have, we have kind of passed the fever pitch of this game. Oliveira held for so long, but he just fell a little bit too far behind. And Rogue never took his foot off the gas. Not even for a moment. Lings are going to get in on top of this. There's so many ghosts, but there is a lot of Zerg here. And this fight is being taken place on creep. GG is going to get called. Rogue takes a banger of a game number one. All right, here we go. Game number two. Spawning down in the bottom left for Dragon Kitesy Gaming. It is the reigning world champ, Oliveira. In the blue. <clears throat> And his opponent spawning up at the top left. It is Rogue in the red. And man, oh man. He looked... He looked so good. In that game number one. That looked like peak form Rogue. I, that, that actually just looked like he, he didn't take any time off. That that looked insane out of Rogue, at least mechanically. He wasn't doing what we oftentimes saw Rogue do, which was like crazy tech switches and, you know, just really all over the place. That was actually some of the... But like, there was, a, there was a franticness to the way he was attacking, and not in a bad way. Some, the, the term frantic often is used to describe, like, uncontrolled. But no, this felt like just... It felt like some kind of tentacle monster, but with, like, whip-like appendages that was just constantly, like, a tentacruel. It felt like a tentacruel from Pokemon. Okay, if you know what a tentacruel is, you know it's from Pokemon. But it felt like a tentacruel just absolutely lashing constantly at their opponent, unrelenting in that aggression. Absolutely so freaking cool. Oliveira did everything he could to keep pace with it, and he did keep pace with it for a long time, but he was not able to shut it down. That first, uh, that first that first attack with the double medevac did find some good value, though. Uh, we are going to be seeing 3cc once again. And for anyone wondering, uh, people saying that Serral is the reigning world championship champion, he is not, in fact. Uh, I am Katowice. While it is a, I consider it to be, I call it a world championship caliber event. Because it's a $500,000 prize pool. It was huge. And of course, Serral won that. Uh, blanking Maru 4-0 in the finals. But the, uh, that was not the end of the circuit. The end of the circuit is going to be uh, the esports world championship in Riyadh. Oh, look at this, by the way, from Oliveira. This is a super greedy opener, and it is a great way to mess about in a best of seven. Double engineering bay, ultra fast, before second and third barracks, before starport. This is such a greedy move, but it is such a good way to set yourself up for a 1-1 push and a 2-2 push. Such a cool setup. Um, but yes, it was designated not the world championship, despite the fact that Sarah won IEM Katowice. Oliveira does remain the world champion until Riyadh, when a new world champion will be crowned. Officially. That is just what the official ruling is.
like I said, I consider the championship that Serral won to be the equivalent of a world championship, even if it's not designated as such. We are just seeing Oliver checking around for a fourth base. Nope, no fourth base yet. Rogue droning hard. Man, that setup he got in game number one was nutty. Uh, we are going to be seeing the mass racks transition coming on in from Oliveira. Something that a lot of Terran players forget to do is to make sure that the timing is correct on their armory off of something like this. I really hope Oliveira starts that armory. Okay, there we go. He starts it appropriately. Still no starport. He's just now starting this. This is such an insanely greedy setup from Oli. Rogue, by the way, already up to 62 drones once again. Not quite as fast as in game number one, but very damn quick. Very damn quick. And great creep spread once again. God, Rogue is really, really good, man. He is really good. Oliveira looks like he wants to do a tank push. Maybe on this position. Would like to see Rogue try and take down these rocks while he still can. While it's still a relatively accessible setup. Overseer going to morph on in. Oh. Oh my god. He might actually get away with this. No, he's not going to. But he's going to force a double stem. And that's already kind of cute. Uh, that did supply block Rogue, actually. Oh, that's kind of a rough one, too. Oliveira does start up the 2-2. This is going to be a really strong 2-2 timing. And he's doing an 8 racks with this. Oh, man. This is going to be so strong. But it is super important to clear up the creep with that. So that you can get your 8 racks really going, really rolling. Rogue. Man, this creep spread is immaculate. It's kind of funny after the incredible chaos of game number one. How, like, kind of much this is chilled out. Thank you very much, by the way, 3D Clan, for the raid. Thank you, thank you. It is going to be the add-on list. Add-on list. Eight racks. We do have a counterattack coming in from Rogue. Getting set up here. God, there's just so much creep spread to work through. Rogue is so freaking fast. Uh, so the supply of Oliveira is going to shoot up, specifically the army supply. Banelings. Oh. <laughs> they they have a, um, a meeting with a siege tank that they could have... They would have preferred maybe to avoid. Hydras will start up this time a little bit earlier, but it is going to be with Hydra speed or Hydra range. No 2-2 two -two for Rogue. I wonder if he's identified. There's No, he hasn't identified how fast the upgrades are. Just now starts up his plus two carapace. This is going to be a long timing where Oliveira's army is just stronger, but it's not yet stronger. Rogue setting up with a little flank here, a little flanky dank. He's going to come in for it. Siege tanks not sieged up. They siege up very late. Oliver kind of split in towards where those banelings were. But as the siege tanks siege up, this will get driven back hard. Olivera almost drawing Rogue in a little bit there. The accidental swarm host has appeared on the production tab. Fifth base going to go down. We do have Rogue setting up with a big lane counterattack. Ooh, Oliveira needs to lift this depot. He is going to lose some units for... Sh Actually, he's going to lose a lot of SCVs. The Marines are on the depots. That's a big problem for Oliveira. But with the SCV pull, he's got enough. Oh, he needs to pull these SCVs into the fight. There we go. He does go for it. Meanwhile, on the other side of the map, Rogue trying to go for the attack, but he gets smashed on the ramp. Baneling's getting absolutely obliterated right there. And now Oliveira stims forward. He is gunning down everything. And the eight racks will even the series at one apiece.
All right, here we go for game number three. Spawning up at the top right for Dragon Kaito Gaming, it is Oliveira. Spawning in on Dynasty. And his opponent spawning down on the bottom left. It is Rogue. In the blue. Once again, back from the military. Now, man, what a, what an event. What an awesome, awesome thing here. Dynasty, we got to talk about it. The gold base makes this a very strong Terran map. What is Rogue going to try and do to counteract that, if anything? Because you, you can't take this gold base. You just can't. You don't get to take this gold base as the, the Zerg player. Not unless you do something to somehow push your opponent off the map. It's just not an option. Oliveira taking the... Wait, what? What in the hell? He... Uh, oh, okay. Um, This is very surprising. Very, very surprising here. Low ground command center. Not taking the gold. I wonder if he's concerned about like some kind of Roach Ravager pressure. I'm trying to think of what else... It could be. I guess if Rogue had a game plan specifically for Dynasty, this undercuts it. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, I guess if you take the third command center right on the gold base anyways, it's kind of fine. Rogue taking the forward third. Which I guess is not... Yeah, you don't really have an option. Kind of have to. This is a big Maximum pervert pillar. Rogue prioritizing a very fast ling speed here. Getting that 330 timing. Not, uh, not delaying that. And it is notable that he takes all three drones off gas. It lets him get just a little bit more of a boost to his income. And that does make a little bit of a... Well, it makes a little bit of a difference. Ooh, 3cc Viking into Cloaked Banshee. That is cute. That is real cute. How many Hellions is Oliveira going to go for? Is, the, of course, the first question we got to ask. And, you know, the more Hellions you commit to, obviously, the more that slows down your barracks transition. But it does still give you potential to do something like a Ling run by. We haven't seen, or sorry, a Hellion run by. We haven't seen that yet. And Rogue has been getting away with some really just ludicrous drone counts in the first two games. Th this is this is where you need to start making a statement, and you need to you need to run some Hellions by at a certain point, just to be like, look, you can't. You can't be doing that. You can't be out here doing a greed like this. And as he goes up to eight Hellions, maybe this is the game where he does try something like that to uh, to get his opponent shaken off the greed. Now, I will say the creep spread is once again just magnificent out of Rogue. Really fast, really strong. And that does make it... That makes it so that as Terran, you really don't feel comfortable going for it. But here it is. He is going to go for that Hellion drive. No, he's not. Okay. Well, he... He got scurred. He got scurred. And there were a lot of queens in position. There were going to be 11 lings. It did force out more lings. Okay. All right. Rogue taking the 
forward position at the gold. That will allow him to get this high yield gas. Oh, that is cute. And of course, the hatchery is going to act as a buffer. He spread creep very aggressively. God, this creep spread is insane. Rogue's early games are so good. But I will say this time, he at least his droning was slowed down a little bit. Even though the Hellions didn't actually go for the drive-by, they threatened it. And Oliveira has been able to mine off this gold. Not as, as much as he could have, potentially. Oh, gotta be careful. Oh, he gets so far forward. Runs towards the creep tumor. Loses the Banshee. Did he even get... He got one drone. One drone for a Banshee is terrible. That is a terrible start for the Terran. That is... The, the most important thing about the Banshees is keeping them alive. But if you're gonna sack them, you want to get at least five, six, seven drones. He does get another three there so at least it's something now i will say the one thing about keeping these hellions alive about not going for the dive is that then you don't have to worry about the ling run bias Ooh, eight racks getting spotted here it is another one there's a changeling at the front the overseer sees all the barracks and this time rogue is way better prepared to deal with this eight racks for one, it won't have the power of that 2-2 that it had in game number two. Additionally, he sees it and he's got way more creep spread. And this is, positionally, this is not a bad setup. It's it's not like Golden Aura where there's these super tight chokes. Combat shields is done. We do have the armory done here for Ollie. So he should start up his 2-2 soon. But I wonder if he's just going to dedicate everything to the attack. And even though he got the armory, maybe just go for it. 2-2 is so far away. And 8 racks was figured out. Maybe Rogue won't expect it that early. But as I say that, he is already ready for it. He's going to jump the front line. That will allow him to take down one of the tanks. Great splits from Oliveira. Rogue might have actually gotten a little bit too aggressive right there. Oliver is going to stim forward with the remaining Marines, and they are... They're kind of cooking. Where are the Banelings? There's only six in production. Rogue fought without 1-1. One, one. Queens are able to transfuse each other up. Ooh, Siege Tank's targeting down at one of the Banes. The last one gets targeted down as well. Oliveira is cooking... And I think he might just be able to take the game right here. And now Queens are going to run out of energy. They are going to get taken down. Not enough Transfuse. Rogue got a little bit too overconfident. And ends up going down to the 8 racks once again. Oliveira puts himself up 2-1. to one. All right. Here we go for game number 4. Spawning down on the bottom left. It is Dragon Kites of Gaming's Oliveira. Getting it done back to back with the 8 racks. And his opponent, he's looking really good, but a couple of misjudgments there cost him big time. Can he turn it around? It is Rogue in the blue. God, he had so much creep spread, but he overestimated his position, underestimated the splits of Oliveira, and he just took such a bad engagement at such an unfortunate timing. It looked like it was good initially. I think if he'd skirmished and then once he killed like the very first tank immediately pulled back, I think it would have been fine. But, or even just forced the siege and backed away. Because he had so much creep. There was like at least two pages of creep, which is to say it's two screens worth of creep that Oliver had to get to, get through before he got to the important bases of Rogue. But... Rogue just just misunderstood the position there a little bit. Maybe he wasn't expecting quite as many Marines because of the gold base. It is something that it's easy to forget how many extra units you can get off of that, off of a relatively lower economy. But I really think it was just, yeah, the fact that his 1-1 one, one wasn't done. And he, he took a creep a fight that was partially on creep and, and just was a little bit overconfident. Damn, very well done from Oliveira, but 
Rogue after an immaculate game number one. And uh, having having a tough go in game two, but not still not a bad game and a really great start in game three. Like Banshee got super little damage. He killed the, uh, or he, he put like a ton of creep. Oliveira did not go for a super fast gold base. Yeah, not bad at all. Uh, we are going to see Oliveira, by the way. Great micro with his Reaper. Able to snipe down a Ling. Oh, and he, oh, he's doing the, the Clem dance. Grenade is going to come on in. But with six Lings instead of four, you're able to defend pretty well. Oliveira, though, finding himself up two to one against one of the greatest players to ever do it. Welcome, Iscar. Hope you're having a good one. Oh, Creep Tumor. Nope, not going to be able to be sniped there. Look at those dual-wielded pistols. They're like mini Uzis. They're the most interesting animation. Uh, we have to talk about Crimson Court, by the way. Crimson Court. This is a map that is weird. Uh, Rogue not taking this third base over here on the right side. Uh, this is a strong map for tank pushes. Tanks in general are just really strong on this entire map pool. There is not really... The, most of the maps, yeah, have a lot of really good tank spots, but Crimson Court has probably the most. There's also these rocks that you need to take down if uh, if you want to have access to the outsides. That's a little weird thing my voice just did. Behind this, 3cc Cloak Banshee, not the biggest of... Not the craziest of things. We do have a Roach Warren coming on in for Rogue. Wonder if it's going to be 1-1 one, one Roach. This is a good map for it. This is a great map for it, in fact. Oh, no, he cancels it, goes for the Baneling Nest. Okay. Yeah, there's a... Uh, well, uh, it's, it's interesting, because if you... Actually, no, maybe it's not that great of a map for it. It can be. If you mine out these minerals, you can hit from multiple angles, but it can be also tricky to try and get through there. And it is still a ramp you'd be pushing up to, up through. Ooh, Hellions. They're gonna go for it this time. This is what I was calling for in the previous game, and Rogue is not prepared. He will pull some of the drones. Decent little spread on them. Lings are not enough, nor are the Queens, but it's only 10 drones, and that could have been so much worse. Honestly, the crisis management from Rogue was very good there. Oliveira is going to lose this last Hellion. Oh, is he? Oh, Banshees. Oh. If he'd kept running it away, that actually might have escaped. I still... Hmm. Was... That was actually technically better for Rogue on cost. Yeah, I think that was actually good enough. I think that was good enough for Rogue. You know, I, I'm... Even though I ask for the Hellion run by sometimes... Sometimes these players, they just... They make me look like a fool, you know? Now, I, I still think that was effective. It was still decent. But now he doesn't have those Hellions. And this is a map where there's a very wide open third. And Rogue has already shown in this series some great counterattacks. Oh, there's no Spore Crawler here. Oh, man. Oh, man. All of a sudden, the damage is really starting to ramp up. 11 drones go down. And Oliveira is now up in workers at the moment, but counterattack from Rogue. Well, that's only going to find one SCV. Good quick SCV pull there, saving the majority of them. Once you... Man, SCVs die so quickly if they're just sitting there. But if you pull them, the Lings can never seem to get the hits they need to to actually kill them quickly. Beyond all this, this is a super fast fourth command center. And I talked about tanks on this map. This is a killer peninsula. It is such a strong little position.
Creed spread. Gonna get cleared up, stunted through the middle. 1-1 one, one in combat shields, getting very close to completing here for Ollie. He's got the armory pretty well timed. It's only about 10 seconds late. But it will be done very shortly. God, this is such a fast fourth base from Oliveira. So fast. He's powering so hard. And he's on 77 SCVs. Rogue is in so much trouble in this game number four. Oliveira has come ready to play. And he is, he is absolutely putting up a phenomenal showing. Oh, Changeling. Nice job from Rogue. But look at this. This, God, this push. This push looks so devastatingly strong. Ooh, he's going to drop the tank on the high ground. I'm not sh Actually, you know what? No, with the positioning, it's pretty good. I would have liked it maybe tucked in a little bit closer to the minerals, but Rogue going to try and go for this. Not going to have an easy time. It is taking place on Creep, the fight that is. Ah, this might still be enough, actually. Hang on. Oliveira, he's going to get cleaned up. I think he just suffered a little bit from victory disease right there. Game two and game three went so well for him. Game four, starting to go super well. But Rogue just pumped pure units for the last little bit. And Oliveira kind of underestimated Rogue's army, I think, there. Stayed on creep maybe a little bit too far. That was a much more even fight in terms of... Well, they were both on 1-1. One, one. Three tanks is great, but if they get taken down quickly, they're not that great. And two of them were enveloped pretty fast. And now Rogue droned after, or basically during the fight, as he was like, I'm going to clean this up. Very good play from Rogue. And kind of with that fight, it feels... Oh! Oh, he thought that was a changeling. It was not. <laughs> it's... <laughs> Poor Marine. It's got four kills. It's a veteran. Leave him alone. Um, but this this feels like that that fight kind of broke the momentum a little bit of Oliveira, maybe in the series overall. It's not over yet, but it feels like Rogue was on the verge of maybe getting mentally broken a little bit. He'd lost a bunch of drones. Obviously, he's a veteran, so he's not going to get truly mentally broken, but you can you can lose your edge. And you compare how he was playing in game number one to games two and three, and the start of game four, it feels like two different players. 2-2 two, two does complete here for Oliveira. Rogue finishing up his own 2-2 two, two momentarily. Widowmine does hit the Overseer, but that's not the same value that it used to be because without Drilling Claws, there is no Cloak. So sniping Overseers against Widowmines until you get that Drilling Claws is not as valuable as it once was. Now, it will be double factory tank. Oh, oh my God. No, it's triple factory. He's playing triple factory on this map. Oh, that is cool. Ghost transition does start up. No 3-3 yet for Ollie. But a, is this double planetary that he's setting up on the bottom side? Meanwhile, Widowmine drop coming in. That is a very strange setup. Uh, Banshees looks like they are going to be able to deny that right side base. We are going to see an attack through the middle from Rogue. Oliveira kind of caught out a little bit here. There's so much Hydra Ling Bane. Siege tanks on the high ground. Will they be enough to hold this position? I don't think so. There is so much Zerg. And Rogue says, I am the swarm blasting through this position. 17 SCVs go down. We are going to see... Oh, nice reef target on the depot wall. But he actually stops going after it. No repair. But on the other side of the map, there is a counterattack. Ooh, that is getting... Cool. Ah, well, it gets the hatchery. Oh, man. Factory went down. Which is a big plum. That is a huge pickoff. It feels like this did just actually snatch the momentum back. Oh, he did get Drilling Claws. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. Nope, you are right, Shu. My bad, I missed the drilling clause. He got it. He got it very quickly. Uh, at least, okay. How many bases is Rogue on? Rogue's on four bases. Ah, Oliver is still very much in a playable position right now, and in fact, he's in. He's ahead in economy. Snipes on the Overlord, not the best move. 
Ooh, Blinding Cloud is going to be nice here from Rogue. He takes down the Orbital. He's going to take down this base. He's chasing these units. He gets a huge uh, mind drag into the army. Olivero's mass factory play is not going to avail him, it looks like. We are seeing counterattacks coming in, but it looks like, looks like Rogue's on top of both of them. Well, he's not on top of these Banshees, but it doesn't matter because he's continuing to push forward. Ooh, Ghosts will... Well, they will end up getting saved. Even now, the army supplies are not crazy, and Rogue's economy has been still hit hard. Ooh, is there enough Transfuse? No, he's not going to be able to get over here. The Banshees will kill the base. Comes at the cost of one of them, but that is why you want to keep those Banshees alive. They can provide so much value uh, later on. Now, Oliveira needs to slow things down a little bit. He's actually getting back up to a third factory. Wants to go for the mine tank style. Very clearly. He's trying to long distance mine the middle base, but not having the easiest uh, go of things. Oh, okay. Wood of Mines do get pushed back. Rogue is maxed out once again, but he does not yet have a bank. He's just starting to build it. Oh, Hydra's in the middle. That is a lot of freebies. There is a Ling Bane attack on the bottom side, which will find a base. It's going to find ooh, quite a few SCVs as well. Good Ling Bane attack. I was wondering why those Hydras were doing what they were doing, but Oliveira says, I can get something done on the other side. There are a lot of Banelings here, but the splits are good from Oli. And he will be able to find this base. He's losing a lot of SCVs on the other side of the map. It's a tough call. Do you commit to the base trade or do you come back home? And I think you've got to commit to the base trade. The problem is there is a lot of reinforcements for the Zerg, but snipes are going to be very good, killing a lot of these Hydras. Viper goes down as well. Oliveira, can he break through? The Queens are being pulled into this. Liberators joining up as well. Liberators will... Oh, one of them goes down. Snipes finding some of the queens. This is still so close in terms of army supply. And they're just overall supply. Retarget there on the siege tank. Lings come back home. Will find a couple of ghosts. They didn't get into the medevacs. That one medevac was too low on HP. Oliveira is up 10 army supply, but he is way down in economy at this point. He needs to reestablish at least a little bit of mining. Rogue did reestablish this base on the top side. He is out mining Oliveira a little bit, and this Ling counterattack is going to continuously gut the economy. Oh, Widow Mines. Oh, do take down the Banelings. Lings. Oh, they might kill this Orbital on the ground. Oliveira not able to lift. He's focused on the other side of the map where Rogue is pressing in, but the Banelings do get cleaned up. Siege tanks are standing the line for now. Oh, it's so close. But I think Oliveira is going to have enough. The Snipes take down most of the Queens. Reinforcements coming across the map. We are going to see Lings going back to cut off some of those reinforcements. And they will be able to find this base. SCV is going to pull into the fight. There's no Adrenal Glands. It is 3-3 versus 3-3. But Adrenal Glands is on the way. Other side of the map. Rogue is being broken around this base. If Oliveira can find this last mining base. Well, second last mining base on the top side. That will be super good for him. He lost 11 SCVs. Oh, but the Lings are coming in. Bane Lings trying to connect. Not quite enough of them. Oh, this is so close. But Oliveira has just a little bit more army supply. More reinforcements coming across the map. There is no concussive shells. So these Marauders are not as strong as they could be. Reinforcements. Two Marines getting picked off. And SCV is going to have to... Well, they're going to have to kind of huddle around the Marines. But the Marines get into a great little pocket. Drones on the top side going down. So many of them actually do escape. And there is so much creep, so he knows where this army is. Oh, Oliveira needs to get up into the medevacs right here, right now. Oh, get in, get in, get in. Does manage to escape the Banelings. It is now a 30 army supply lead. This series is insane. Adrenal glands finally going to complete. We've got scans coming in from Oliveira. He sees no base there, no base there. He knows that he can chill a little bit. 
Losing that orbital on the bottom side did hurt a lot, but he still has a decent little economy at this point. And in fact, it's now better by a lot than Rogue's. Rogue gonna come in with a link counterattack. Siege tank. Uh, taking a little bit of a pound of flesh right there. Oh, I love this little drop. He saw that there was a drone there. And he's anticipating that a base was taken. It wasn't, but it's still a very smart move from Oliveira. Rogue setting up with a little link counterattack here. He's down 40 army supply. Ooh, Banes and Lurkers. This is an expensive attack, and I don't think it's going to find the value it needs. If he kills the base... Ah, oh, SCV's pulling in the Lurkers. Not what you want, but it doesn't matter. There's not enough. And Oliveira will go up 3-1. to one. All right, here we go. Game number five. Spawning up in the top left. It is Dragon Kaisi Gaming's Oliveira. Displaying some magnificent micro. And his opponent spawning down in the bottom right. His counterattacks have been so good. And his play has been decisive. But he's just been a little bit short the last few games. It is Rogue. Can he turn it around, though? Honestly, after that, that fight in the middle where Rogue was able to get the cleanup on that big first push from Oliveira, the three tanks and a bunch of Marines, I legitimately thought Rogue was just going to turn it around, take the game, and then take the series maybe even from there. That felt like a big momentum shift. But Oliveira showing that Eye of the Tiger did not give up did not let the... He just didn't let go of that one. Absolutely phenomenal stuff. And I am... Oh, man. I am just so on board for this whole thing. So on board for this whole thing. This is, this is the kind of play that we saw from... This is the kind of play that we saw from... Uh, Oliveira at the his world championship victory. Man, God, he's so freaking good. They're both so freaking good. Absolutely amazing little show match happening right here. Nope. I will, I will mention, I haven't mentioned it so far, that uh, Oliveira, or Rogue, of course, has been favoring these six-ling openers. Uh, which is a... It's a neat way to get into the mid-game. It's a very neat way to get into the mid-game. I like it. Every game, we have seen a fast third CC from Oliveira, and, and there's a reason for it. It's a really good way to play. Really strong. I would say even go so far as to say the strongest way to play. <clears throat> now, you can go for stuff like uh, two racks, Reaper plays, etc., and it can be really strong. I'm assuming it's going to be Cloak Banshee once again. Yeah, it looks like it. Looks like it. Ru Man, Rogue's creep spread has been absolutely ridiculous. Just bonkers. In this series. And, and like, it's gotten so good that it feels like his opponent... Or it feels like Oliver has given up on clearing it at certain points. And to be fair, that's been the right call multiple times. Like... Sometimes you just have to focus on winning the fight instead of strangling your opponent. Oliveira just, like, and when you kill all the creep, the Zerg really does feel strangled. That That's just kind of how it be. That's how it is. But, me oh my. Oh, grenade. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. 
but we do have a Roach Warren coming on in. Is this going to be where we finally see the Roach play out of Rogue? Is this going to be it? Rogue has been kind of tuning back on over droning the last little bit. Uh, even though that Hellion drive-by got some damage done in the natural, it didn't It didn't put him into a game-winning position. The Banshees kind of did. But then Rogue made an excellent defense happen regardless. Because he's Rogue like that. Yeah, this is going to be 1-1 one, one Roach. I'm, I'm nearly certain of it. So we'll see Rogue go up to 66 drones and just going to see if he can blast through from there. Him and Dark, two of the best 1-1 one, one Roach players to ever do it. Now, there is always the chance that it just ends up being a transitionary play. Like, you don't necessarily have to go for this setup. Uh, you don't necessarily have to go for a, a kill move with this, but I, I feel like... Well, actually, he's already droned up to 70, so maybe not. But no fourth base just yet. He didn't really prioritize that super hard. Uh, the other thing is, Rogue has always been a fan of Nidus play with the Roach Ravager pushes. Ooh, an 8 racks. Okay, well, Roaches can be very good against an 8 racks. Roach Ravager. But at the same time, it is going to be a lot of army supply to potentially deal with this. So we'll see. We'll This could absolutely go either way. Oh, he didn't get Cloak. Oh, interesting. Okay. Oliveira cutting that Cloak upgrade. Rogue has done an excellent job of not letting his roaches get shown. Not, not revealing these roaches like at all. Oh, Hellions on the bottom side. Going to find a little something-something. Roaches do finally reveal themselves. We are going to see it will be the transition. Okay. So it is going to be Infestation Pit, Baneling Nest. Quite a few more drones already. Hellions looking for an opening on the bottom side. But Lings are in position. Even though a few of them do go down. And he actually didn't even lose any Hellions. So it's still a good move from Oliveira. Actually, it's still a great move from Oliveira. Ooh, it is going to be the Tech Lab to 8 racks. Okay. This is a this is a style that Ryung has made very... Actually, Ryung's is a little different. Ryung would actually do double factory sometimes, 8 racks with the Tech Lab. Oh, these units dropping themselves into a weird little pocket. I thought that for sure they would drop on the high ground, but for some reason they didn't. Very strange. Rogue using the corrosive vials to say, piss off, I'm taking these rocks down. You, you don't get to stop me. But here's why, here's another reason why keeping the Banshees alive is such a good thing. Great scan, by the way, sees the drone count at that base, and that will let Oliveira know, yes, my opponent is, while well, they're transitioning out of this, they're not, they're not going for just a crazy all-in with 66 drones, which means I need to get aggressive. Because a hive is probably coming. And that is correct. The hive is, in fact, very close to completing, but it's not done yet. Oliveira, a lot of siege tanks here. Well, actually, no, it's only four siege tanks. It's the, oh, it's the Hellbats that I was looking at that looked mechanical. This is a strong pushing position and a really great spread of bio and tanks. Oh, Bane Speed's not quite, quite done yet. We'll complete in a moment. There it is, right on schedule. But this is a lot of Terran here. I don't think Rogue's quite got enough. More Banelings coming in, but they are getting a little bit body blocked. Good spreads from Oliveira on the bottom side. And these Siege Tanks are going to stand strong. Rogue will get broken, and Oliveira is going to crush through and take Game 5. With that, he takes the whole damn thing. 4-1. to one against a returned rogue from the military. Man, oh man. What a series it was, though. After that game one, 
I was legitimately scared for every other player on the planet because that was one of the most dominant ZVTs I've seen in terms of a mechanical showing in a long time. That was that was up there with like that was up there with Serral. That was a fantastic game number one. But Oliveira got those two eight raxes, broke his opponent's momentum. Turned it around on Crimson Court after Rogue had turned it around on him, and the rest was history. And if you enjoyed that series, make sure to hit that like and subscribe. Check out the rest of my videos. We will catch you on the flip side.